you really have to make it. Uh, <laughs> so, hi, um, I'm Blessing, and uh, this is my talk for uh, Hacking the Random 2600 Vanilla Data Box, uh, which is called Back of Tricks. Um, so, first of all, who the fuck am I? Uh, some people in here uh, might know me from various communities, or the internet, or just IRC places in general. Uh, but I think it might help if I just drop some names here and you might be able to recognize some of this. So, um, I'm part of Team Tweezers, which are the people that uh, initially hacked uh, Nintendo Wii, uh, which is a little uh, white box game console by Nintendo in case you're not familiar with the Nintendo Wii. Yeah. Uh, so, for, the, for Nintendo Wii, we uh, made this thing called uh, the Homebrew Channel, which is basically uh, a, a little bundle of an exploit and an installer to uh, get your own code running on Nintendo Wii. Uh, after that, we thought it might be a good idea to have some kind of fail-safe mechanism to uh, you know, recover your Wii in any case, if you screw something up, mess with the firmware files or whatever. So we made this thing called BootMe, which is a, a bootloader replacement for uh, Nintendo Wii. <coughs> uh, so basically you install this on your Wii and it will allow you to uh, recover at any time, no matter what happens. Um, and after this, well, I worked on this thing called Letterbomb. Um, so the thing is, in order to hack your Wii, you always needed a specific game. Uh, this is annoying because you just bought the Wii, which is like 200 euros, or we, we just had a recent price drop, it's actually 150 now. But, and then you had to buy a game for 60 euros in order to, you know, export your Wii and get your own code running. So, <coughs> what we did is we found a flaw in the, in the message board system of the Wii, you can send email messages from one Wii to another using a unique uh, email address. Uh, so there's some, some buffer overflow there, and we can um, leverage this functionality to uh, uh, get our installer running again and install the homebrew channel. So we set up this little web page called uh, please.hackme.com, and you just surf there, uh, enter your Wii's MAC address, and uh, you click the, the button and it will give you back a file. You drop it on an SD card, um, copy it over to your Wii, and when you go to the message board there will be a little bump icon, and you click it and it will start the installer. So that's <laughs> that. Uh, I'm also part of uh, Fail Overflow, which is mostly famous for breaking the PlayStation 3 security. <clears throat> we presented about this last year at CCC, <laughs> and after that, we had some legal issues <laughs> with Sony Computer Entertainment of America. But luckily, most of us are in Europe, so most of us weren't affected. Affected. There was actually one guy who almost got taken to court, but um, well, let's say they settled and things got smoothed out, and it's quiet again. Um, I'm also known from. Uh, well, Hack in the Box, uh, .nl, where I helped out with uh, Capture the Flag games. So we make uh, various puzzles for these little hacking teams to focus on doing the Capture the Flag uh, contest together with uh, Dip Switch, uh, Dr. Wax, where is she? Dr. Wax. Ah. <coughs> um, and when I'm not busy with all that stuff, I uh, also like to play uh, CTF myself. I do this with a Dutch team called the Einbasen, which basically means final bosses. So some, some stupid joke, hey, and that's going to be on. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so what the fuck will I be talking about today? Uh, bag of tricks, random stuff, really. I didn't, I wasn't really sure what the audience would be, so whether I should make it really in-depth and technical, or more on the surface, so I think I found a nice way in between, I hope. It shouldn't be too dry and boring, but maybe this to some of you, and Sorry for that in advance. Uh, it is in no way groundbreaking. This, well, maybe some of it is. We'll see. <coughs> so, let's start off. Uh, messing around with mobile APIs. But first, groceries. <laughs> uh, so, let me give you a little backstory here. What made me dive into all of this. Um, so, at work, we have uh, a lot of people who are hungry and thirsty all the time. So, we need groceries, right? Uh, management got tired of 
taking care of uh, inventorizing all the groceries and keeping track of all the bills and the separate bank account that's set up for the groceries. So they carried it over to uh, us, the employees. Uh, so we're in charge now of uh, figuring out who wants to eat what and who wants to drink what. Uh, this is an annoying process. Uh, and someone said, well, wouldn't it be funny if uh, the, the grocery store we shop at, uh, Albert Heijn, had, uh, had their own API? Like, that we could talk to their API and get back the products and the prices and sort it out, mix matches a bit. But unfortunately, they don't. Uh, but then we got thinking a bit. They have this uh, mobile application for Android and iPhone called Oppy. And uh, <laughs> this application allows you to, uh, to browse through the products, uh, make your own shopping list, uh, keep track of what you purchased using your uh, bonus card, all kinds of stuff. So we thought, wouldn't it be funny if we uh, uh, take apart this mobile application, figure out how it talks over the internet to the Albert Heijn servers, and re-implement this logic in our own library or client in order to, to talk to this API. So the goal here is uh, understand how the API for the mobile application works. After that, we will, of course want to interact with the API and maybe just do 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 legit uh, legit uh, API calls. Or if you want, you could mess around with the API parameters and maybe find some bugs or whatever. And well, profit. <laughs> <laughs> so our options are: there was an iPhone application, an Android application. So we could go down the route of uh, disassembling the Objective-C code for iPhone, which I don't know if any of you have ever disassembled Objective-C code, but it's a really annoying process and doesn't give you very readable disassembly uh, listings. <coughs> so the other option was uh, decompiling the Android application, uh, which is uh, all Java stuff using a known uh, VM made by Google that uses the Dolphic opcode, etc., etc. People have made tools for this. You can uh, basically go from an APK, fi APK file uh, back to readable Yahoo code. <clears throat> this seems like a feasible option, but it's boring, right? We don't want to reverse a lot of code, figure out a lot of stuff. <laughs> it would be much easier if you could just look at the traffic. It's a universal method. It's not tied to Android or iPhone. It will work with anything. <coughs> so, some assumptions. Uh, 99 out of 100 APIs are use HTTP as a, <laughs> as a way of, well, they're hosting on HTTP. <clears throat> but any serious API will use HTTPS. So this is kind of a problem because all the traffic is encrypted, SSL, blah, 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 difficult stuff. So, first step we did was, um, well, let's set up our own certificate authority. <laughs> so anyway, HTTPS, SSL, this is boring stuff, right? Nobody wants to, to dive into the gritty nitty details of, of all this protocol stuff and nobody likes it. So uh, what I did was I googled around a bit, uh, googling for uh, SSL man in the middle attacks and it was all complicated with some Java applications and didn't quite like it. And eventually I stumbled across this little script. Uh, you basically run it like that, and you give it the domain name you want to uh, uh, fake an, uh, <coughs> an SSL connection for. So in our case, this is ms.aa.nl, uh, with AH stands for overtime, by the way. <coughs> so what we do is we generate our own pair of certificates, uh, and then on the target device, we, of course, when it tries to resolve uh, ms.blah.nl, it will get the, 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 the real IP address of, of the box, so this is no good because it will still connect to the old host. So what we do is, uh, on iPhone this is pretty trivial, if you have a jailbroken iPhone, you can just SSH in, edit the host file, but of course you could also uh, set up your own DNS server, uh, point your phone to use that DNS server and then resolve the host you want spoof to IP address of your own box. So now what? There's this cool tool called uh, S-Tunnel, and uh, well, it's, uh, it can do a lot of stuff. But uh, here we use it to, to set up uh, a man-in-the-middle SSL. So um, the script we ran in the previous slide will spit out a bunch of certificate files, 
amongst which is master.pem. So we tell uh, Estenol to use that, uh, port 443, local port 8080. Then we start another instance that tells it to forward all the traffic again to the actual host on port 443. And then we have to import the master.pem file on the actual device. So uh, on iPhone, it's pretty trivial. You just open up Safari, uh, browse to your pen file, and it will ask you to import it to the certificate store. <clears throat> on Android, uh, it's a bit more complicated. You have to use ADB to pull in the key store, uh, insert your certificate, and use ADB again to push it back to the device. So let's grab some traffic. Uh, we install TCP dump and SSL dump. TCP dump is basically just uh, a packet sniffer which is able to spit out the raw PCAP files, which is a standardized format for uh, packet cache. We tell TCP dump to dump any traffic on port 443. We could make it more specific to filter out the exact destination and source IP addresses, but in this case we don't care, we just want any traffic on port 443. So after capturing a bit, uh, we can simply run this through SSL dump using uh, another pen file that the search script spits out, tell it what pcap file to use, and use minus d to uh, have it decode all the traffic. And when you do that, uh, we can get plain HTTP requests uh, back from the, from the pcap file. So this is useful uh, to figure out how the application does certain actions, uh, which API calls are needed to the server, uh, if you pay close attention, you can see here that they append a, a digest uh, parameter. So, um, <clears throat> a lot of APIs don't actually do this. So, once you figure out uh, how the API works, you can simply talk to it. There's no way of, well, some check the user agent, but this is what's a bit more complicated. So, I have one more slide about over time. Uh, spend two hours. Eventually <laughs> decompiling the Java source code, <laughs> going through all kinds of indirection, factories, uh, objects here, object there. I mean, it's a, it all boils down to this, this simple line. They take uh, a SHA1 sum of the requested URL, your username, the body of the request, if you're doing uh, like a put request or whatever over REST, it has a post body, so that's a uh, checksum as well. And at the end, it concatenates this secret string, which Kind of looks like lead speak for Google Mobile, but not quite. <laughs> so at work we have some speculation whether this is actually random or not. Um, well, I think that uh, that's about it for uh, fucking around with APIs. We uh, successfully implemented this at work to uh, do our grocery list, so we're happy about it. <laughs> Demo. <laughs> um, Actually, yeah, I have a demo, but it's not reachable from here. I have to set up an SSH demo. It's complicated. Did you, did you try to like uh, go through the entire store, find, find all the items, which are suddenly uh, priced at a more convenient price point, but somebody well, made a mistake? Well, that's actually, yeah. And just like grab all the items that are like priced for like like one cent, two cents, a euro, and should be like ten euros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could actually do that. You know, filter out like like. Uh, Things they fucked up in the in, in the pricing database, right? <laughs> exactly. So, that, that's what I'm doing with flights. I just grab yeah. all the flights I can get for cheap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. We could maybe set up a cron job that fetches all the products once a week, starts so. dipping the prices, see if there's any fluctuation in price. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Look, if it's yeah. got more than ten percent cheaper. Yeah. I mean, if so, this. I think you've got an engine for that for comparing prices. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Enough about uh, stupid HTTP APIs. Let's talk about uh, pawning PHP. PHP is, uh, as you might know, an, uh, a scripting language, which is used a lot on the internet. Web pages use it, Facebook uses it, one of the biggest web pages ever. Uh, it's quite popular. You can write uh, a sloppy code and even more sloppy code using it. <laughs> uh, PHP security has been uh, researched quite a lot, and there have been lots, lots of publications about uh, certain types of vulnerabilities, like local file inclusion, remote file inclusion, all that kind of stuff. But it all boils down to, to fiddling around with the PHP script itself. And, well, eventually you say we have this situation. 
We uh, compromise the web server, right? So I'm not saying you should go out and compromise any web server, but if this is for like pen testing purposes, or <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so we are in this situation, right? We can uh, upload PHP codes or otherwise run PHP code in some way. Sadly, uh, the system administrators got clever and disabled any code execution uh, functionality within PHP. So there's a bunch of functions like system, exec, pass through, open. There's a whole list of them, and they usually uh, blacklist those in order to prevent people from uh, escalating their rights uh, from a web server user to like a local shell, and then use that again to execute some local root exploit or whatever, and take over the entire box. This is some kind of poor hardening to uh, stop people from elevating their rights. Luckily, PHP has a lot of uh, memory corruption vulnerabilities. <laughs> and usually they are quite prompt in fixing those, so someone will submit a bug on uh, box.php.net and uh, like five developers will jump on it, oh let me fix that for you, and uh, well there's your patch, and then it will get uh, well, the, the, the Linux distributions will also adapt the patch and packages will be updated and security will be good, right? Unfortunately, there's a couple of these bugs that have remained unfixed for years. And the reason they have remained unfixed is not that they are unfixable, but fixing them would introduce a regression in the functionality of the PHP language. So they've uh, introduced all these kinds of cool uh, functionality and people are using them in big open source projects. So if the, they fix these certain kinds of vulnerabilities, they would break that functionality. This is good for us. <laughs> <laughs> so, I um, level up the PHP to the rescue. Um, I wrote this little thing called uh, level up the PHP. Let's talk a bit about that. <coughs> So, back in 2007, uh, Stefan Esser, probably known from uh, various talks at uh, Hacking the Box and uh, publications online, uh, found a neat little bug in PHP. Luckily, this bug still works in 2011. Uh, <laughs> so, it remains unfixed for over three and a half years. Uh, so, what my exploit does is uh, it bypasses uh, uh, non executable uh, uh, measures using uh, return oriented programming. And in case of uh, open base there, when it's turned off, so that means you can uh, go directories up and read files from there. It can do a universal uh, error space randomization and non-executable uh, bypass. By so like on Linux you have the proc file system and there's this neat thing called uh, proc slash self which has information about the current running process. So there's this file called proc self maps which has a, a memory map of the entire current process. So we can, we can parse this uh, maps information uh, to find out where the libraries are loaded in memory, and then we can open the libraries and scan for certain opcode patterns. And, and so much easier. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, and find our gadget. So this is a little uh, slide that uh, demonstrates how it works. I've uploaded a uh, hex.php, which is the level up script, uh, to my box. <coughs> uh, and I'm sending a post request using curl. I'm telling uh, there's this post variable x, which is the special variable where you put your uh, commands that you want to execute. And you just say, oh, uh, I want to connect back shell to this IP on that port. And on the other box, I have a netcap listener running. And it's passing back to shell. So that's about it. <coughs> The certificate scripts and the zero day for PHP can both be found at this URL. Grab it quick because I'm planning to take it down by middle night. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Is it here? No questions. No questions. Yeah. Not great. Thank you.